Cookie and the most annoying boy in the world. <laughs> so Cookie being the main kind of character in yes. the book. And it's a character that was sort of has been within you for a while. You yeah. wanted to put this in the paper. Yeah, that's it. In my sort of extended bigger family, you know, um, growing up when I'm babysitting other kids and so on and so forth, I used to tell stories about this character called Cookie, where everything and anything that could go wrong would go wrong. So Cookie is, she's like a cross between Bridget Jones and Wimpy Kid. Yeah. And I've done illustrations throughout. She sees the absurd in everyday life. But I like to think it's got sort of stealth learning in there. She's quite sciencey. She's quite geeky. She loves long words like uh, defenestrate, which means to throw out the window. So she'll sort of go around um, being a bit of a smarty pants, I think. And um, what I like to think about the book is that I've packed in loads of stuff like diversity, inclusivity, social awareness, STEM learning, so that's science, technology, mm -hmm. engineering and math, but in a stealth way. Stealth woke, so you're being entertained because it's really funny. Laugh out loud with all the comic strips, and she sees the absurd in everyday life. So the pictures of her flights are fancy, but also, you know, if you read the book, you'll be gaining knowledge and information as well. And as you say, it has it, been slipped in in a very clever way, yeah, which, which sort of works. And you mentioned the illustrations because you did everything yourself, yes. I'd, li I'd like to say, you know, the illustrations would be of an Axel Scheffler standard, <laughs> but I'm drawing through the eyes of a nine year old, so I've sort of done these like little stick pictures um, but it was really good fun illustrating it and it meant that I could show her head thoughts without having to write them in the actual story yeah um, well I particularly like the appendix as well because at the back <laughs> of the book you've got instructions on how to make a lemonade fountain a yes. potato cloth yes there's all sorts of things that are in the book and then you explain how to do it exactly because growing up good. I used to love sort of the interactive element of those choose your own adventure books for instance and my kids love where's Wally you know books that add a little bit more in pictures can often especially comic strips, cartoons, can draw a reader in. So there's loads of diagrams and stuff. Like, there's a, there's a graph in there, for instance, just as an, as an example, of um, the correlation between the amount of time she spends with her best friend and her happiness. And it's like a positive correlation. So it's sort of got lots of stuff like Venn diagrams and lit, little bits and pieces, but related to funny things that are going on in, in her life. Yeah. And I've tried to also make it appeal to boys as well as girls, because... It's in, in our times of non-equality, girls will read books about boys, but boys don't tend to read books about girls and we need to redress the balance. Well, have your boys read it then because yes. they're at that point now, obviously, that, that yeah. they're getting what mum is doing. <laughs> you know, it's, what, the thing about this sort of book is, because it spans from a seven to 12 year old age range, so Covey's seven, there's loads of stuff that he gets out of it and there's loads of stuff that might go over his head, but it's slowly sinking in. So he might not understand fully, whereas a 12 year old will get more out of it. So it works on sort of lots of levels. Yeah. Do they, do the boys also get what, what dad does as well. And when I say dad, dad and you do lots yes. of many things, but Black Mirror... I think they kind of get it, but I'm not sure how much. <laughs> I don't think to... they know it's a dystopian future <laughs> scenario in a Netflix viewing platform. Not quite that. Yeah, yeah, not quite to that level, but they know Black Mirror is a thing. Is a thing. Yeah. You went to Glastonbury recently. Yes. Courtesy of Miley Cyrus. Yes. We got to go backstage and then we... And you know what it's like. There's sort of areas with sofas and pot plants and you're in the middle of, you know, Glastonbury, where people are camping, it's all a bit surreal. And um, Covey said it was the worst day of his life. <laughs> he hated it and he kept wanting to leave and you just want to act like you're a good mum. <laughs> and he was wriggling about, he kept like sort of, he had these like ear defenders on because he, he found it too loud, obviously. <laughs> and, and then he kept like sort of, flinging the, um, the cable. And it's like, please don't whip Kylie Minogue with the cable of your ear defenders. Um, because they were just some headphones that someone had put on him to yeah. stop him complaining about the noise. The noise, that's Miley Cyrus, Kobe. When he looks back in years to come, yeah, he'll he get might that appreciate moment. it. Yeah. He will. Ungrateful children. It is out today. So it's officially out there. It's, out it's today. your creation and I'm, I'm, there. Yeah, it's very <laughs> exciting. Um, yeah, so anyone near a bookshop, it's a brilliant gift for any child of 7 to 12 and I've got a, I'm doing a book event later today at Foyles Charing Cross Road if you're in the area science quizzes fun prizes so it's all in there it's all happening fantastic as always so great to see you oh lovely thank you see so you. much and good luck to your little one as well thank you 11 I months yeah I know already can you believe it that's what happens <laughs>